Hello everyone, my name is Ronnie Wink and today we're going to be talking about a Kagan structure called draw what I write or draw what I say. This may be a structure that you've never heard of or it might be one that you've heard of but never tried. So let's take a look at what this structure is all about and maybe you'll be inspired to give it a try. I get a lot of questions about teachers who are looking to implement more or different Kagan structures. You might feel that your students are bored or that you are bored of the same old structures. I promise your students won't get bored, but trying a new Kagan structure is always recommended once your students are proficient at the structures that you regularly implement. Today we are going to talk about the structure called draw what I write or draw what I say. The ability to communicate with precision is a valuable skill for students to learn and will ultimately help them as adults in their personal and professional lives. Just think about how important precise communication is for you as an adult. For example, a wife describing to her husband over the phone exactly where to find their child's medication. A yoga instructor cueing her class on how to make complex movements for stretching without causing injury. Tech support walking a less tech-savvy customer through the steps of setting up a satellite receiver or a computer. All of these are examples of the importance of precise communication in our everyday lives. Teachers need to have clarity and give precise directions to their students during direct instruction in order to teach new concepts. And students need to be able to learn to have that precise communication. And that is a skill that needs to be taught and practiced. Draw What I Write is a powerful structure for developing written communication skills. Likewise, Draw What I Say is a powerful structure for developing oral communication skills. Through practice and interaction, students learn what works and what doesn't. They learn that they often have more or different information in their head than the other student does. They learn how to see things through the eyes of another and how to describe things for understanding. These structures develop communication and perspective taking skills through engaging interaction. So let's take a look at how to teach these structures and see what it might look like. Let's start with draw what I write. In this structure, the, the teacher will provide directions and model for the students what to draw. The students will independently make their own drawings. They will then look at their drawings and write step-by-step -step clear, precise instructions on how to make the drawing that they just made. It is now time for the students to pair up, exchange those written directions, and try to recreate the drawing of their partner. The originals are then compared to the new drawings. Edits can be made to the written directions based on feedback from their partners. So let's see this in action in a fifth grade OMSD classroom. See if there's anything you need to fix in your drawing from the original. Okay, show me where that's at. Got it. Okay, what's step two say? Um, draw a line in the middle. Got it. Okay. Don't touch the line so you get it. So I didn't know what to do. Okay. Then go down two times. So I went down two times. Got it. Go down straight and connect it together. So that I just... I just forgot to so it, it doesn't look like the original, right? So what could we do to fix those? She should have said like draw like I don't know like draw be like this way like in another way like keep on doing it but don't touch each other. Okay. And at the end, do the same thing, connect them. Okay. As you can see from the example here. The student received written directions and tried to replicate the drawing of their, of their partner. But it's so difficult if those directions are not precisely um, organized and telling the student exactly what to draw. So then it was time for the teacher to guide the feedback that they were gonna give their partner on what needed to be included in the drawing. It's a lot more difficult than it looks. How can we modify this for our littlest learners? If your students aren't ready to write down instructions, they can still learn to give precise verbal instructions. This is still valuable as we teach our kids to think critically and communicate effectively. So for our little students, it would be draw what I say. In this structure, teacher again provides directions and models for the students what to draw. 
The students then independently make their drawings. The students then look at their drawings and instead of writing, they think about step-by-step -step verbal instructions on how to make that drawing. The students then pair up and take turns giving verbal directions while their partner tries to recreate their drawing. The originals are then compared to the new drawings and feedback is given to the partners. As you can see, this is very similar to Draw What I Write. The difference is they are talking or in giving oral directions instead of writing them. So let's take a look and see what this would look like in a first grade classroom in OMSD. Draw like a rectangle. Okay. No, like, uh, yeah, like that. So draw the rectangle. Now inside of the rectangle, draw another one. Oh, I think I know what you're saying. Then like inside the big one, not the small one, but like inside the big one, draw like two little dots on the white. Right. This one? No, the other side. So like two little dots. One, at, yeah, like that. So then, on the other side, on the left, draw just one dot, one dot, up on the top. So under that, draw like a cross, kind of. Next, like a cross. Do you not know what a cross is? It's like an X. Uh, what letter does, is that a cross like? A T, like a lowercase T. Oh, plus sign. Very good. Yeah. Then like, on like, on like, top of... Oh, you can't point. You got to use your words. On top of, on top of like the big wet, wet tangle, draw like. As you could see from that example, the student was using precise language and when their partner didn't understand, they had to then rethink and give another way, uh, find another way to give that direction. In this case, the teacher had to help, but what a great skill to be able to think about and revise their communication. The power of this structure is in helping our students improve their communication skills, written or verbal. Contrast to approach, approaches to improving writing skills. The traditional approach has students write and then give feedback from their teacher. The teacher is the evaluator. In Draw What I Write, it's totally different. Students receive feedback from their peers about their writing and can medi immediately see what their writing does. The student learns to give concise instructions. By getting that immediate peer feedback, students see what worked and what did not work in their writing and verbal directions. They're motivated to improve. Draw What I Write lends itself to differentiated instruction. Students can write to describe more or less complicated figures depending upon their developmental stage. They work at their ability level in their speaking and their writing skills. Here are some management tips as you implement this structure. Skip lines. If you are implementing Draw What I Write, have students skip lines when writing and have a wide left margin as they write their instructions so they can use the spaces to make corrections during the editing process as their partner gives them feedback. Simple drawings. Show students how to make very simple illustrations. Complex illustrations will be difficult to describe and even more difficult to recreate. This may need to be modeled over and over again by the teacher. We also want to teach our students that the goal is to work together to recreate the drawings. We're not trying to catch our partner doing something wrong. Acknowledgement or rewards for recreating the drawing accurately, accurately might be helpful here. And finally, varying the difficulty. Consider what you allow your students to name in the directions that they give. Instructions can be made easier or more difficult depending upon whether or not students are allowed to name their drawing or parts of the drawing. For example, it is easier to draw a fish if students write, these instructions will describe how to draw a fish. Similarly, it is more difficult to draw the fish if students don't know what they are drawing and they aren't allowed to mention the parts by name. So if the student can't include the word scales or fins, 
They have to describe those features in such a way that the reader will be able to draw the parts without knowing in advance what he or she is drawing. Structure should always be done non-academically first, just as in the examples you saw. But while this structure works on writing and verbal skills, it can be used in conjunction with other academic content areas. Here are some suggestions. In math, they could be geometric drawings, math equations using pictures or items with different measurements. In science, they could be drawing pictures about transportation, animals, habitats, astronomy, body systems. In ELA, they could draw nouns or verbs, story problems and solutions, or phonics skills. In social studies, we can talk about maps, flags, artifacts, or symbols. I hope you're inspired to try this structure. It is very valuable for your skills to work and practice these skills. I would love to come support you as you implement this structure. All you have to do is reach out. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Thanks for watching this episode of the Curriculum Cafe. Click like and subscribe to join the cafe for more classroom tips from the TOA team.